Okay, what we're going to be talking about is in-lane marquetry into solid wood. Now, normally, um, what is done with marquetry is, is the whole surface is veneered. So here's an example of a typical marquetry. Where I've got this bottom shelf of a coffee table with some marquetry in the center, and that whole surface is veneer, and that works great in this application. But sometimes, you'd like to just do that inlay into a solid wood surface, and we'll be talking about that. And now here's an example where I've done an inlay into solid wood. And here's some solid cherry that's part of the, the leg of this, this table. Um, and that is all solid wood other than the inlay um, that I've done there. And we're going to be talking about how, how do you do that. Here's another example of the same, actual, actually the same inlay, but inlaid into a, a small wooden box. Again, solid wood um, with just the, the, the veneer for the inlay. So, we're going to show you some examples. So this now shows the marquetry that we're going to do the inlay on. Um, here's, here's the marquetry itself. And we're going to create that by, by normal techniques of marquetry that we won't be talking about here. If you want to learn how to do that, you know, check out my previous video listed here, or there's lots of other resources on the, on the internet or books or whatever. Learn how to make marquetry. But what we're going to do is create the marquetry like that, just in, in the veneer. And then we will use a router to actually do the final. So the final part of the marquetry is actually this circle around it that we won't cut as part of the marquetry. We'll cut that as we do the inlay. And we'll be doing that with a router that we'll be showing you. And the same router setup is used to make the recess for the inlay. Okay, and that finally gives you then the final result with the circle cut out. This doesn't have to be a circle. It can actually be any shape. Um, we're going to be using a circle here, which is obviously one of the easiest, but it can actually be almost any shape with a few caveats that we'll talk about. All right, so what we've got here is we've got our marquetry done, basically. It's it's just taped in place. You know, we've got some tape on the back. The pieces were inserted. Um, and now we're simply going to, you know, normally we would glue this to a, a solid you know, piece of plywood or whatever, but we're just going to glue it to a backer. In this case... I'm using just a veneer. Um, you could use a thin piece of plywood, you could use anything, but a veneer makes sense. Same thickness as this veneer I'm using. And we're going to line them up in, with the grain in the same direction. When we're dealing with solid wood here, that's going to be the most stable way. You can do it the other way, but it's potentially um, could run into problems down the line. So we've got the grain in this direction, the grain in this direction. We're going to put some glue on here. And then glue this, again, tape side up always. And we're going to glue those together. And that's about all there is to it at this step. So let's put a little glue on and go from there. Okay, and here I'm using Unibon 800, um, a glue I like a lot. And if you want to know the reasons, go check out my previous video on marquetry where I talk about that. Um, again, you could use you could use yellow glue glue or white glue that also works okay just fine and then I'm going to tape it up just a little bit here just to keep it from shifting when we clamp it <clears throat> to press it and here I'm going to just press it in a standard um, with clamps um, I'm putting first some wax paper there to prevent the glue from potentially sticking and that's a good idea to put something that's squishy just some newspaper in this case and that just helps to make sure to even out the force in case there's any unevenness, that'll help distribute it evenly over it. And then you just, just got some thick, um, some thick boards here to distribute the, the pressure. So I'm just using two uh, three-quarter inch OSBs on the bottom of the top, and that just gives you a nice even pressure everywhere. Okay, and here we've pulled it out of the press, and we just got a bunch of tape to remove, which we're going to do. And once we get all that tape off, um, which we have all the tape off here now, um, now the next step is we're going to use the router to cut that circle out of this this now to which will be the final piece that we inlay okay now here's the what we're going to use for um for for cutting out the inlay so we've got this bearing um that goes in the plunge router and it's used in conjunction with this one eighth inch straight bit and the key thing is it's got this collar that you use it you use it without the collar when i cut out the circle 
but then you put the collar on when you cut out the recess. And that seems a little confusing maybe, but that's because the, this collar makes up for the difference in the diameter of this bit. Because when I cut this out, I'm taking the inside, and so I'm losing that eighth inch is just going to waste. But when I cut the recess, then there is no waste. The, the bare, this is going all the way to the outside of the recess, and that's why you need this differential bearing. Okay, here we're going to cut the circle out of the marquetry. So first thing we're going to do is apply a bit of double stick carpet tape, really strong tape, to hold this down while we're cutting it. And we've got this yellow tape on the back, which will help us to remove this stuff. It's such strong tape that it could kind of stick a little bit too hard to the veneer if you're not careful. But anyways, the, the yellow tape makes it easier to remove it. But it wouldn't be essential, I don't think. That's what I normally do, though. Okay, so we've got some sticky tape on there. Now we're just going to set this down right about there. It doesn't matter exactly where, but about there. Okay. And now we're going to take our template. So we made a template here, circle template um, that I cut out of half inch MDF. And we're going to use that to cut out a circle. Now this could actually be any shape you want um, with the limitation that the radiuses have to be greater than an eighth inch. So you can't have sharp corners. It won't work with the router. Um, but any other shape is fine. But here we're just using a circle, nice and simple. And I'm just going to center it where I want to cut that circle out. I'm just doing it by eye. I do a pretty good job that way. Just where does it look about right? And that looks good. And now we're going to clamp it in place. A couple of clamps. Okay, and now we've got our router. I got the bearing installed and the eighth inch router bit. And we're going to follow that template and go around to cut the circle out. Okay, and recall at this point, I do not have that outer collar in. I'm using the bearing without the outer collar to cut the inlay. And there we have it. We have an inlay ready to go into a recess that we're going to use the same setup to cut. Okay, now I'm going to just I'm going to back bevel. Just the, here's the back side. I'm just going to take some 120 grit sandpaper and just clean that up a little bit. At the same time, changing, maybe decreasing the ins, the diameter of that lower, you know, the lower diameter by just a tiny bit to make it slide into the slot a little better. Um, I'm trying not to sand the top outer surface because I don't want to decrease the size of that out. Just a little bit, clean it up, and at the same time making a very slight bevel. There you go. Okay, now I'm getting ready to, uh, to route out the recess. Um, number one most important thing, you got to put this collar on to make that bearing bigger. If you don't do that, it's going to be the wrong size. Okay, so put that, that on for routing the recess. And then we have to set the depth. The depth wasn't too important before because we were just cutting through the inlay to cut it out. But here, we, the depth is very important. Um, the easiest way to do that is I've put it on my same template I'm using here now. Um, exact same template. And to set the depth, what I'm first going to do is just stick it all the way down until it hits the bottom. So now the now the uh, the bit is just hitting the bottom surface down there. Um, and then I lock it in place so it won't move. And now I'm going to adjust my little depth thing here on the side, okay, which is right here. And that will be my stop. And what I'm going to use to set that is I've got a piece of the scrap. Um, that I've cut off from the inlays, and that's that's going to be the right thickness. I mean, you really want it to be just a little bit shallow so that the inlay is sticking up just a hair so you can sand it down flush. And so what I've done here is I actually sanded this a little bit, the surface, 
and I actually used my caliper and I sanded off maybe five thousandths of an inch. Took you know really quick, and then I'm going to use that now as a shim in here to to set this depth. And so drop this down. I'm going to I'm going to really push it in. I, I'd rather have it be a little bit um, too shallow than not deep enough, really. Well, I mean, I mean, than too deep. So I've got that. So and that's in there, good. Yank that out, and that should be the extra depth now. That's how much further it's going to go down um, to give me the right recess. Now, good idea to do a test piece, you know, depending upon how valuable your stuff is and. And that's what I'm going to do here before actually cutting. And I'm not going to bother showing you that. Okay, now we're ready to, to cut uh, cut the recess in our piece. And this is a piece we're going to be cutting into. It's the side of a box I'm building. And you can see I've got some center lines in there because I want the, uh, the circle put right in the center. And I'm going to use my exact same template here now. Um, I'm going to set that down on there. Um, and I'm going to use a couple of the other sides here it's just as little shims, just so when I clamp it down, it'll have something to clamp to. Um, again, my, my template. And I've got some little center line marks in here that I'm going to line up exactly with this to get it, um, to get it perfectly centered on this piece. Okay. And as we discussed, I've already got got the depth set and I've tested that depth and it's just right. When we make these templates you want to have enough space to be able to put the clamps you know far enough away that they don't interfere with your with your uh, router. That's why the template's a little bigger than you might expect. And get it clamped down good. We don't need any tape now because we're not cutting through, so there's not going to be any loose pieces flying around. We're just going to clamp it down good. And we've got her centered. And then we just uh, start doing a fair amount of routing. It's a little eighth inch bit, and we have to route that all out. So, you know, the, the bearing provides us the exact outline, but then in the middle, we just have to move it all around. You can switch to a bigger bit, but that's kind of a pain. Um, because then you got to reset the depth. So we'll do it all with the eighth inch bit. I'm going to make sure it's good before you remove the. Before you remove this because it can be hard to get that exactly in its place again. You can see the recess we've cut out, and that will be an exact fit for any of these. We'll just fit right in there that we're going to glue in place in just a little bit. Yeah, so it's pretty much just a standard glue up here. Spread around, use a fair amount of glue. No sense, you'll be able to sand off any excess. Um, and place her in there, and then just clamp it up with some, uh, some well, tape it in place a little bit to make sure it doesn't shift on you. And then just clamp it with a, a couple of boards on top, again using a little bit of uh, wax paper there to prevent things from potentially sticking where you don't want them to stick. Throw a few clamps on, let her dry, and you're done. Okay, now and here's a final example of the box that I built, and there's the inlay in there. Um, and as I've mentioned, you can see the grain of the inlay is in the same direction as the grain of the box, and that will be the most stable way to do it. Um, however, with something this small, so the, the inlay is only about three inches in diameter, a little more, um, you can do it the other way. And here's an example where the, uh, the grain of the box and the grain of the inlay are perpendicular to, perpendicular to each other. Um, and I've had that box for probably six months and it's fine now and it probably will be fine long term um, with again with a small inlay like this, but it is not as stable. And with enough humidity changes and with bigger inlays, you could certainly see some cracking doing due to the differential expansion of that bottom layer 
and the and the veneer. Um, whereas again in this example, they're both expanding in the same direction. And although there's some difference in the species in terms of how much they expand, I don't think you'd ever, ever see a problem with going this way. All right. Have fun building one.